Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This week uh, we have the release of Nomad 2.1, I think it is, which has added some new functionality to an already fantastic program. Um, so I've been messing around with it for a little bit over the past couple days, and I kind of wanted to show you guys some of the cool features, some of the things that I've discovered. Um, so let's just start very basic. One of the neat things here, let's blow that up a little bit, zoom in on that. And I'm going to go ahead and just validate this. And if I want to bump up the resolution on this, and you've seen me do this a hundred times, hit remesh, you can see how it needs smoothed out. Well, there's now there's a new functionality where you can do it via slider as opposed to going to the smooth icon and smoothing it all out you know with your pencil if you go up here i'm left-handed so i have it on the left but most likely you probably have it on the right but there's like a little beaker icon click that and then it brings up a whole variety of different uh things that you can do one of which is there's a smooth slider so if you go ahead and move that slider, it will smooth everything automatically. And see what it did? I didn't have to sit here and draw it all, smooth it all out. Um, let me add a little clay, see if we can make that even more apparent. And if I go to that smooth slider, see how it smooths everything out? It's kind of hard to see, I, th I know, with the way I have this lit, but yeah, so that makes life a little bit easier. You can also change around uh, colors the same way too. So like, let's say I'm gonna paint um, a little bit of color there. I can now change the exposure of that color, the saturation, contrast, hue, which is awesome, as well as, you know, if I wanted to change the roughness, the opacity of all that kind of thing. So very, very cool. Some neat stuff there. So that was the one thing. The other thing, which I am super excited about, which is why I have this existing model up because I thought it would fit pretty well, is the randomize ability now. So like, let's say I wanted to do, obviously he's like in uh, water of some kind. Let's say I wanted to do bubbles. So I'm gonna add a sphere, okay. I'm gonna shrink it down. And I'm gonna add an array to that sphere, okay. And I'm gonna make this count, I don't know what I'm gonna make it, 20 maybe? Let's see. <laughs> We'll, tr we'll try, try 20 across the board and see what happens. Okay, okay, okay. And I'm gonna change the sizing considerably. Size, size, size. Let's see what we have here. 20, 20, 20. Yeah, I'm gonna bump this way out. Okay. And these are gonna change. I know it's a ton, but now if you go to here on the end of the array menu, there's a randomize button. Click that, and now you have the ability to randomize all this great stuff. Look at that. Maneuver it, I'm gonna scale it. Go this way with it, I think. There we go. Randomize it maybe even further. Something like that. So you have all of this wonderful randomness in the scene now. And what you can do 
is if I go to the sphere, that's part of the array, <clears throat> and I go refraction, I now have all these cool bubbles. Turn that off. There we go. So obviously this is a bit overkill, but just kind of wanted to prove my point with it. I'm going to go back and kind of spread them out. Whoop, maybe too much. Whoop. So I can really kind of fine-tune these things, translate them more. Scale it however you want. And you know, I wonder why I did that. If I set that to a layer, I don't think it's going to let me. If I validate it, maybe add a layer. And now if I go back to that array and randomize it, will that show them like moving? Because that would be amazing. Oh. I don't know if that's going to work. OK, let's see. I don't think it's going to work. Um, because I think it has to be, yeah, it's got to be part of this, part of the array, not the sphere. That's all right. But it, how cool is that? I mean, look at that. Now he's part of like this environment. Let's see what he looks like if I put him on a turntable. Might crash it. Oh. <laughs> uh. I'm kind of surprised by that, that it would even do it. All right, let's see. I wonder if I, oh, maybe if I pick like the actual, this guy. Oh, I see what's going on, okay. Say maybe array. But the possibilities for this are really tremendous. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to work. Let's try. Turntable now. <laughs> it's kind of funny though. Um, I wonder if I can fine tune it. I'll have to mess with that. Rotation, maybe if it's zero. Now try it. Turntable. There we go. There we go. Obviously needs fine tune, but how cool is that, right? Okay, so that's just one one of the things I kind of came up with on the fly. Um, another one, so kind of playing off of that same same vibe. Um, yes, was rain. So you could add rain to a scene. I started doing like this snail and I thought that'd be cool if you could do some kind of a raindrop. Let me turn the array off and let's select, whoop. I gotta figure out where that is, solo. Okay, so this is all it is. And let's change that to opaque. So I just took a sphere and shaped it up to, to make it look like, you know, like a raindrop would. Okay, let's go back, solo, turn on that array, and you could see, there we go. Using that same randomness um, within the array menu, 
you can make raindrops. Something like that. Let's change that back to refraction. And you can kind of see. And you know that it changes too in your materials for refraction. You wanna you can mess with the opacity of it, the reflectance index of refraction. That all that all has a a change to it. Almost looks like broken glass here, but and you know, and you can change um the randomness of it. So if I wanted to scale it different, whoop, rotate them, all that changes. So that's cool. Let's close these, whoop, all that. Okay, I had one other idea, which was kind of interesting. So I thought, and I may flesh this out into a, like an actual character at some point. Uh, like an office worker that fell asleep at his table and he's got all these papers and he's got a fan going and it's blowing the papers everywhere. So imagine that this box is, you know, his stack of papers, so to speak. I'm going to add a plane. Make that roughly the same size as the top of the box or your stack of papers. Okay. And then using the array um, add array again I don't know how many we're gonna say 20 and okay 20 okay I don't know off the top of my head but it's a start and then the size is whatever. Obviously this is too big. I probably don't need 20. Let's try 10. Maybe half of it. Okay. Bring it back. And hit randomize. Now you have all these amazing like sheets of paper flying everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and kind of shape it up a little. And how cool is that, guys? You know, and then I could do like, I don't know, a box. Whoop, I'm part of the array now. And say, you know, if this is my tabletop kind of thing, so to speak. Probably want to do all this before you turn on the array. Let's turn that off. There we go. Rotate. Oh, it's all goofy. There we go. Snap. You know, if this is my table, And I could have like, I'm going to just super rough it in. Oh, that's the other thing. Let's do that. Um, you could now, where was that? They also has the ability to bring in, uh, shoot. Was it add to scene? I can't remember now. Cancel. Shoot, shoot, shoot. There's a way that they have, Nomad now has their own heads 
and bodies of geometry. Um, and I can't remember now how to bring them in. Shoot. I thought it was in here. Whoop. Oh, man. Ah, preset. There we go. So this little button up the top, if you click on the folder for project and you hit preset, you now have all of these different things that you can bring in. So like, let's just put like a stylized dude. So it's got skulls, it's got jaws, it's got full sculpts of people. Um, add to scene, yes. Let's scale him way up. Scoot him back, just so you can get an idea, you know. And I think all of these are also, yeah, like higher, hierarchically correct. Turn snap off. I think you have to separate them or something. Um, well, maybe not. Yeah, see? How cool is that? So if I want to have them like sitting, they've really just made life a lot easier, which is awesome. I'm doing this super, super rough, but you get the idea. And then line. Whoop. No. Oh, I didn't have everything, that's why. Let's click on that. Turn that there. And then let's turn our array back on so you get the idea. You know, something to that effect. So just super cool stuff. I mean, the possibilities are really kind of endless in what you're going to do. I'm going to further develop some of these things, I think, for future videos where I'll be using them. But I just wanted to do a quick run through to show everybody since it came out recently um, some of the different things you can do. <clears throat> and you should play around with a lot of this stuff. I mean, you can, there's a blur setting in here, um, all kinds of neat stuff. I don't know if you can see that. Um, you can inflate, which is cool. Um, like if you needed to blow something up, that'd be good for uh, maybe hard surface things, masking. Oh, that was the other thing. So a face group, like if I had a rough face group, I can now relax that face group Yeah, by a slider, which is cool. So yeah, just a little bit uh, easier all the way around. So that's going to do it for this week's video, guys. Uh, I appreciate you watching. As always, please like and subscribe, and I will see everybody next week. Take care.